She did say just take them down. So. Oh, I know, but everything just looks so delicate. <laughs> Well, during COVID, um, there was a bit of space um, and time to um, reevaluate and um, think about how I wanted to move forward. Where do you want them? Which side do you want them? Just hanging down from the nail? I think just middle. hanging down from the nail in the middle. I think that's going to look the best, isn't it? Because it's that or stick them and, on the wall. Um, and what I really needed in my life was a little bit more space to work in. So I decided to build a studio in my garden. I don't have a large one, but it was like, I don't really use the space, so get the stuff out of my house and put it into the studio. So that's what I did. And thinking about um, the space that I would have left in the house afterwards, I was like, well, I could maybe do something with that as well. And so I um, thought about having an exhibition. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you have those little things, they could go in here, you see. Okay. Um, but what I could do... I'm Tara Dean. Uh, I'm a, a community artist, an uh, illustrator based over in Denbyshire um, in North Wales. And so I use um, screen printing to um, process my drawings, really, um, and use lots of layers of colour to um, create them. <laughs> so it might be a bit close. So a few friends and I were already in collaboration um, um, about putting an exhibition together, just the three of us, because our work complemented each other so well, that I just decided, well, maybe a couple more artists and we could have an exhibition. And so from that, Crossing oh, Borders was born. Bargain. It, it was covered Pardon. in nicotine. It stank, and I've redone the back and bought a key for it and a little lock, but it smells like the key. Oh, did you buy the key? Well, I bought oh, the lock. how gorgeous. I didn't have lock on Crossing Borders is came about really because I used to live in Chester and work in Wales for a long time and um, during that period I couldn't get involved in art events in Wales because I lived in Chester and so it's it's all about kind of crossing the border really being able to reach out to people wherever they are also it was very relevant because of Covid as well with all the borders closing and what have you so we just wanted to really emphasise that fact and uh, and therefore it was it became crossing borders open studio oh well that's amazing i hope, I hope it doesn't look too homemade i hope it looks well, nice mine yeah. looks mine looks more homemade than that oh well you've done as well brilliant oh that's your oh, logo that's well. logo brilliant. i'm clary flavel i trained as a sculptor and have strayed into making jewelry as i'm getting back into making metalwork i've had a break of a few years so um, I trained in stone, metal, um, glass casting, lead casting, various other mixed media. So getting back into metal work, I'm dusting off my tools and my skills and running myself through a series of pieces that are more saleable to try and get my work back up and running properly. Hence the, the lack of continuous coherence in the work there's different techniques and there's different styles because of course i didn't train as a as a jeweler and i don't have one particular style it's come from a conceptual background and i shall return to that when when the time's right which is pretty close on now i think i've got lots of new cards made oh, but now good. i don't have any events to take them to <laughs> <laughs> Basically, even though we followed all the um, regulations and guidelines for keeping people safe for COVID, we felt that it was a, a little bit more of an informal um, space for people to come and view art um, and have it in a, a home environment so you can actually see what it looks like in a, in a home environment. Oh. You know, for tomorrow, you don't get the... Yeah. You get a plain lampshade on. We made an appointment system so that nobody was overlapping, so everything was safe. We all wore masks um, and kept our distance within the space that we had. And uh, we, we found that that worked really well. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a really lovely flow to the whole day. I just want you to assess 
the space so you can have a think about it while we're having lunch. Yeah. You can sit and think about where you can put things because you know what your work looks like. I don't. Mm -hmm. I've got okay. I'm Lucy Elizabeth Jones. That's right. And, it's better to have from two Chester, now. and my studio is in North Wales, um, which brought along the title of Crossing Borders because live in one place and work in another. Um, I trained in Winchester, and um, I mainly paint in acrylic, um, and I do. I used to do a lot of photography, and uh, when I was at uni, I did silk screen printing to get that photographic image into the painting but since then I have been developing the um, image transfer method so the image becomes part of the painting rather than sitting on top or being separate it's an integral part of the painting but um, they are process led so that's what sort of the paintings are about the process of painting if you like. No that's right no? No. Sure. Left hand down a bit. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. Okay. My name is Debbie Nairn and I'm an applied artist working mainly in ceramics. I also incorporate wood and metal into my work as well. Um, so my work basically um, comes from the nature nurture side of things. Debs. That's right. This is easy compared to what I have These are on really tiny things. Where a seed goes into the ground and the husk becomes um, nutrients for the plant to grow into a strong plant. Um, and I feel that it's the same for human beings, where parents um, teach their kids morals and then they become um, strong human beings in later life. I work in slip casting um, in my ceramics um, because that gives like a, a really delicate feel to them, almost like eggshell. So it's again incorporating that husk, that skin, that protection, that um, nurturing. I should probably get rid of my toys, shouldn't I really? Your toys? My teddy bears. My name is Mary Hill and I'm an artist and a florist and it's been quite a long roundabout journey to get to this point but um, yeah I really like the relationship between making things, design and also documenting them so I sort of make things and then photograph them or also grow flowers and photograph those yeah, too. Yeah. We need okay. a little bit more of your presence here, I think. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I'll go and do that yeah. then. If you've got if you've got anything, I yeah, think it would yeah, be nice. No, just, I've got the other, a couple of other really nice And ones. it's also really part of my practice to work with other people so we're, and sort of develop community projects, classes, workshops. And this probably is an extension of that. I've always been um, somebody that likes to kind of connect with people and, and engage in my practice. Overall, it's been um, a really lovely experience um, that artists and customers alike have enjoyed, I think. Um, and um, hopefully um, this will then lead on to more um, events in the future. Um, so sales were made, connections were made, and um, overall it was a really, really positive experience that I can't wait to do again. Hello. Hello. Tara does the print work, so these oh, ones wow. here. Yeah. Um, and then there's... Lucy, who does the um, very colourful block prints with the print and... I think this is the future now, that we have to make our own collection of venues and collection of contacts that we can exhibit. But having an open studio where there are a group of people, I think, is 
good to pull people back in to let people see at first hand they can actually pick something up and hold it. I see the future of open studios as as something outside of what's happening with COVID. However, because of what's happening with COVID and um, a lot of art fairs and things being so cancelled, it's even more important than it ever has been. Got this, which is copper oxide underneath um, clear glaze that I've just dabbled on. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think artists and creatives have always responded to difficult situations and that's really what we're doing now and that will continue to evolve because I think we're not, we're not going to go back to pre-COVID times. I don't think anybody thinks that. And, um, you know, people that are doing better in terms of what I can see are people that are self-organising. So it's going to be an ongoing thing. Yeah. So we're... Uh, you're it's up brilliant. next. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, um, because of um, the oh, pandemic this year, I think it's um, it really has shown how important the art, the art, it, art is and um, bring, uh, bringing artists together. And we've had the technology um, of linking everyone together. And I think this is going to be a live um, line as well, exhibition. But so for virtually for people who can't come, they'll see it. But it's also a, a great opportunity for the people to come and, you know, see it in the, in the real and also... Um, for in the future, I think it will be a way. And open Studios has always worked really well, so I think there'll be more of these popping up in the local community as um, artists come together. And it's arts for all, so that's what's really great. There's <laughs> only <laughs> hair. I haven't even got a hairbrush. No, it's, like, it's great, though. That's what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> it's lovely. Someone said to me something about hair. I said, oh, I have a hairbrush since I was 17. I used it on an art project. <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> again. That's it.